hello everyone welcome to zarev game dev in this video i am going to create the rush game in unity so it's uh, another catch up clone and it's an infinite runner type and before starting creating the game if you did like the video then do like and comment on this video and if you want to see more videos do subscribe to the channel so let's start uh, creating the project so as you can see i had an empty project opened up and we have our gameplay scene and before that i added the path creator which is the asset it was created by sebastian lag and it is free and you can get it from the unity asset store and it will help us to create the bezier path it's not perfect but uh, it will make do for now and next we have will create our uh, tm pro text so let's import the text and we'll just delete it we just need it to have our text in the scene and that should be it for all the assets and uh, we have our text and let's start exploring our example scenes so for the scenes what we'll need is the road and as you can see the camera is not perfect but uh, this is how the road is and there is a road mesh holder which uh, and there is this road creator which we can edit and let's copy this both two and we'll paste it in our scene so let's copy and we'll go inside our scene and we'll paste both duplicate delete paste so that's how our road is looking and for the road creator first we'll reset its path so it looks almost uh, good enough and let's reset its transform and similarly we'll, uh, there is no need to do for the road my shoulder and now it's uh, not looking too much good so uh, let's see what we can change for the road width let's make it 2.5 and texture tiling let's set it to 2 or maybe around 5 for now and for the thickness 0.1 it won't matter for the thickness but uh, its orientation we need to position it in the z axis so let's click this and as you can see it is positioned somewhere around here and let's position it as negative 5 so that's how it's looking and instead of control mode or line we'll set it to automatic so that's how it's looking for now and let's set up our camera so we should be able to see our road and next we'll change the color so background color because it's looking almost something darker so let's change it to somewhat bluish so so we should be able to see the road so that's how the road is looking for now and after that let's create the game manager and let's also create our player which is a 3d capsule and we'll call it player and for now let's just reset its transform one negative one and five so instead of five let's position it at zero and instead of negative one let's position it at one so that's where we can see it so this one is positioned at zero so let's uh, have it a little bit farther negative 10 and similarly our uh, player let's have it positioned somewhere so it does not collide so let's position a little bit uh, further away so let's 
negative five. Uh, let's create our Mm, field of view maybe we should set it to 90 for now and we have our player and the player already has a capsule collider and let's attach a rigid body because it will need to detect collisions and it doesn't need any gravity and we'll also attach the player script and nothing else should be needed so that's how our player is looking and to have our player look good enough let's create a material and we'll just call it player material and we'll duplicate this player material and we'll rename it to obstacle material and let's set both this color so the player is going to be somewhat reddish so let's change its color to red and let's make it 183 and let's set this to 15 and we'll assign the player material to the player and for the obstacle material we are going to go for somewhat around bluish so let's set it to six to six and two to four to one four so that's our obstacle material we won't need it now but uh, we'll change it afterwards and for now our player is looking almost pretty much good and similarly for the directional light you can if you if you want you can change the light and for the X, let's make it. What will happen if we reset? Let's undo. So 50 negative 30 is uh, somewhat, uh, it won't matter. So that's how our basic scene is looking right now. Now let's create the UI. So for the UI, we just have two buttons. So the first button is the start button and for the start button it's going to take up the whole screen uh, no transition and we'll set the color to somewhat reddish transparent so we are able to see at which position we are and that should be it for the start and for the text let's just call it start text and instead of top we'll just call tap to start or maybe just uh, tap to start will suffice and for the text let's increase its size to center it's already centered but where is it inside our screen So for the start text, its size needs to be 64 or maybe around 128 bold. Okay, so now it's starting to look. And for the text, we are going to use from one of our earlier projects. And it was something I think I used it in the zigzag store. You can get it from the GitHub link. So I'll just uh, uh, copy it from my folder. So where is Rush? Hmm. Assets, materials, and we have the font asset and uh, so we'll put it inside the materials and the font is going to be similar but this asset we need to change the source file to maldini 
and the rest i don't think it will be needed but uh, we'll need to change the project settings and for the text mesh pro we'll disable the warnings so for now let's change this text to what we had so this is just tab to start let's make it white and let's increase its width to 1200 and height 250 and now if we position it around negative 850 and let's increase the size to 160 maybe 128 works better so that's how it's looking and we'll change a color of the start text and now let's add our title so we'll just duplicate hmm. now we'll add another ui so that's for the start text now let's create a ui text text mesh pro and we'll just call it title and similarly it's going to be pure white the text is going to be rush let's make it bold and for the width let's set to 1500 by 250 let's position it towards the center and we'll position it towards the top let's make it uh, around 850 so it should do almost and we are not going to go for what color we'll need to use we'll just use whatever will suppose it's fine and next we have our two scores so for that scores we'll need to bump up its size a little bit and similarly it's going to be a ui and it's going to be text and let's just call it score it's just calling score and the score it's going to show for the previous session and let's bump up its size and let's make it 160 and if we change the text to 500 and let's position at 500 750 700 yep 700 looks fine and similarly we'll position negative 500 250 and we'll duplicate the score parent it to the score and we'll call it count and it's going to be similar but let's have it four zeros and it's going to be from the top and let's push it its height needs to change 100 and similarly this one is 100 we'll push it down by 50 negative 150 50 and 100 and okay we need to go it from the bottom and we'll push it down by negative 100 and that should be our score and similarly we'll duplicate the score and we'll create one more for the high score and instead of plus minus we'll do the plus and instead of score it will just call the best and let's position both a little bit more towards the left so instead of 250 let's have it to 300 and for the high score we'll make it positive 300 so that should do for our score and next up we have one more button so let's create a ui and it's going to be a simple button and let's just call it tab button and similarly the tab button is going to form on the whole screen we'll delete it and no color tint and we'll change the color to be transparent so there are two buttons and we'll only show one at a time so there should not be any problems 
and that should be it for the start screen now next step uh, will the canvas let's see in the canvas so instead of screen space only we'll change it to screen space camera plane distance let's set it to one scale with screen size and for the screen size we'll use 1170 by 2535 and we'll match width and height equally reference pixels per unit is 100 mm, doesn't matter so the canvas is working correctly we have a game manager we have a road mesh road mesh holder and event system and let's position game manager towards the bottom let's reset its transform and assign the game manager so we have our player everything's correctly set up now we need to patch it up all in the game manager so let's start editing our script uh, let's go into visual studio and let's go in the game manager script we'll need all the functions but uh, let's see what we want to create first so let's create the using director first so the first thing we are going to use is the tm pro the path creation and next we'll have path creation dot examples because we'll need to get the road mesh creator and inside the game manager let's create our public static game manager instance and let's have our awake manager so if instance is equals to null then instance is equals to this else we'll just destroy the game object and after that Mm, nothing else is needed for now so that should be it because we are creating instance because we'll need to access it from the player so static game manager would pretty much do the trick instead of finding it so let's uh, add all our variables so let's create a serialized field and let's create game object and the first game object will need its uh, start button and then we have a tap button and after a tap button we'll need our player then the camera and the obstacle prefab and that should be it and next let's create a serialized field for tmp text and there are just two texts the first ones for the score text and the next ones for the high score text and let's create one more serialized field and here we'll get the path creator and let's just call it path creator and afterwards let's create a serialized field private private and this one is also going to be private so this one is road mesh creator and we'll just call it current road this one will need to change the texture tiling and next so start pose maybe it will be used somewhere start pose yep we'll need to change the update hmm current position 
maybe uh, we won't need it but uh, we'll see how it do it and let's create a CLI field one more and here we have a private float the first one is offset how much longer we are going to spawn our what do you call it as points which will create the path start distance and then we have our speed and the last one is for the obstacle and spawn start distance and let's create two more floats so this one are not going to be serialized field distance travel and the next one is for the obstacle distance and one more is going to be clan mo whenever we are going to call the coroutine and similarly we have the pirate and score and high score and any more ends won't be needed private bezier path uh, let's just call it current path and let's set up the instance all the instance inside the awake let's first get the current path and it's going to be path created dot bezier path and let's assign everything inside the start function so for the start button dot set active is going to be true and then after tap button or set active is going to be false and distance traveled is going to be the start distance and obstacle distance is going to be the obstacles on start distance is left path is going to be false has game started is going to be false and canmo is going to be true because we have not clicked anything and canmo is going to be false whenever we'll switch the lanes so instead of just uh, changing its position instantly it will change the position uh smoothly which will use do it using lerp and afterwards can move let's get the score player press dot as key and we need to get the score key then we'll get it from the player press as we we'll set it to zero let's copy it and we'll need to update the score text so score text or text is going to be score dot two string and similarly high score text dot text is going to be high score dot two string so that should do the trick for now and afterwards we are going to create the path and for the path Mm -hmm. yep let's create the path first so let's create the path 10 times and we'll create a function for that so let's call it void create path and inside the create path before that let's create a void and here in this void let's call the set initial state and 
this one is going to position our players so let's position the player first get point at distance and we are going to get it from the distance traveled and afterwards normal get normal at distance of distance travel and next we will get the direction and we will get the local up direction which is going to be the cross product so v3 dot cross and we are going to cross the direction and the normal so this is the direction and this is the normal left and rule and we'll normalize so after getting our positions we'll do player pose plus is equals to local up plus normal and put this in the brackets and camera pause player dot transform dot position is equals to player pose and player dot transform dot rotation is going to be quaternion dot look rotation and for the forward we have our direction and for the upward normal look rotation forward and upwards okay somehow it works and let's uh, get the direction Mm. Normal is towards the right. Okay, it goes with respect to the zero. Now let's create our camera pose. So let's go with the camera pose. It's going to be. And we need to update the camera pose again. Camera pose plus is equals to My camera dot transform dot position is going to be the camera pose and my camera dot transform dot rotation is going to be quaternion dot look rotation and here first we'll pass the direction because it's the upward direction and next we'll pass the local up into 4f and the direction we are facing is the negative so we'll do direction and doing that hmm so that should set the initial state and let's create our path so inside the create path let's Get the number of points and that's going to be path creator dot path dot number of points and similarly afterward we will get the current poles and
we'll get the last point and after getting the last point we'll get the normal and let's get the distance glad closest distance along path and we'll pass the current force so this should get our distance and we'll also need the direction get direction and distance for the distance dot normalized and we'll also need to get the up direction so it's going to be cross product for normal and direction <laughs> and after getting our directions let's create the temporary offset so it is going to be random dot range local up and we'll update the start force we'll multiply the direction by the distance or the offset and afterwards we'll add our temporary offset so it will current path dot add segment to end So that should do the create path and let's create our start game function. So this one is going to be public void start game and here the start button dot set active is going to be false. And tab button dot set active is going to be true. And after that, as game started, is going to be true. And next is going to be public word switch. And inside the switch lane is left path is going to be is not left. And let's also create our score. And inside the update scores function, we'll need to pass one more parameter.
will set up the high score and after setting up the high score we'll also set up the score so that should update our scores and let's go inside unity so we should be we should have to create so many connections so let's go inside unity and let's go inside game manager first so let's attach our start button then we have our tab button then we have our player then our camera and obstacle prefab we have not created it but uh, score text the high score text the path creator which is assigned in the road creator and the current road creator which is also assigned in the road creator and the start pose is already 000, zero. and offset let's make it 15 max spawn radius let's set it to 2 start distance is set to 5 it's also set to 15 instead of offset let's make it 10 obstacle spawns are distance so we are going to spawn start at 20 and now let's hit play there should be errors but uh, let's go into road mesh creator and now let's hit play so we are able to do almost and everything went as i supposed so we have a road and there is our player and let's set up its direction so for the direction player 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 where i would set it up in the initial state so look rotation the forward is the direction and upward is the normal so let's see how it looks Okay, instead of normal, we need to pass the local up, so now it should be fine. And that's how our player is looking. And if we hit play, nothing would happen for now, but uh, we are also getting our score. So, next up, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll start moving the player and we'll also create the switch lane function so let's uh, go inside visual studio and let's fix up the things we are left so we have our player spawned at the current pos correct position and we are also creating the correct path and after start let's create our update and everything's going to happen inside the update function. <coughs> so the first thing we are going to check if the game is not started. And we'll just return. Uh, after that, we'll increase the distance traveled. Speed into time dot delta time. And we'll copy. Uh, the player pose and we have the player pause <laughs> now we'll also need to update the camera pause so let's also copy our camera and the camera is always going to move and before that here we'll add one more if we cannot move then we'll return the camera pose is changing we have our speed changing and normal and here we'll need to multiply and we'll need to multiply if it's less path then we'll multiply by negative one as well multiply by one so that should do the trick 
and the update function should correctly set up switch lane is also correctly set up and if we uh, do it correctly everything should work fine so let's go inside unity and game manager let's attach our start functionality so let's attach our game manager and we'll call the start game and similarly for the tap button we'll call the switch lane function and it's not moving and we'll need to select the road creator because it's an internal problem for what we have used and if we click as you can see our player is moving in between the two lanes now uh, the distance traveled is almost like uh, it will go back and forth so there is no problem with it but uh, we'll fix it afterwards so next uh, we need to have the obstacles and the game over condition and now we are just changing the transforms position we'll need to have the player move towards the next position so we'll do that and can move this set to false and there are a couple of things so let's see what we have left let's go inside visual studio so awake is almost set up and inside the start we have created the path initial state is also set up and inside the update we'll need to check if distance traveled is higher than the path length i mean distance traveled plus some offset is higher than the path length then we'll create the path so let's do that to set up the infinite condition so inside the update and where is our update it should be over here if distance traveled plus 100f is greater than so distance traveled plus 100f is greater than path creator dot path dot length maybe we should use less than Mm -mm. maybe up greater than because it was already when it is greater then we'll create the path so that should do the trick for now and inside our switch lane we need to have it gradually so we'll create a coroutine for that and it's going to similar to what we did for switching the lane but uh, we'll just first we'll stop the coroutine term it will stop any other coroutine and it will create uh, this good looking coroutine and then we'll start the coroutine and um, let's start the term coroutine and inside our stop coroutine let's uh, get our player position so vector 3 player pause local up not initial state we'll need to get it These are the player pause, normal direction, and local up. Can move the set to false. And instead of player pause, let's call it move position because this is where we are moving.
local plus normal and normal similarly will multiply this left part then negative one f else will multiply by one and v3 player pause here player pause is going to be player dot transform dot position and next we'll do the while loop and we'll check if v3 dot magnitude of player pause minus move position is greater than 0 0.1 so till we have reached close enough we'll update the move position Hmm. Move pose normal direction local up. Update the move position and we'll need to update the player position. Player dot transform dot position. Hmm. 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 Why did our move position change? It should not happen. Okay, so move position is correct. Player position is also correct. Normal direction, local up. Move pose, player pose, then we'll change the player's position. So player pose is equals to v3 dot lerp, and we'll lerp from the player pose to the move pose in speed and we'll increase the speed by a factor of two. And afterwards, need to change the player's position. Player dot transform dot position is equals to player pause. And our move pause is also updated. And we'll do yield return null. And when this is finished, we'll set the can move to true. And we have the start coroutine turns. So now, instead of directly changing our position it should transition so let's hit play and as you can see instead of directly its transforms changing we are having it change gradually and i think we updated our road mesh so we are going to get an infinite long road and i think suppose because this bezier creator is not optimized for our road uh, i mean our infinite runner there are so many things that are happening so it's whenever uh, uh, new points are spawned it pretty much slow so that should be it for our road creator so it uh, changed the distance and we'll need to Mm, yep we'll need to just add the obstacles now so let's create our obstacle so our obstacle is pretty much easy to create and inside our game manager let's change a couple more parameters so speed is 15 the start distance is 5 max spawn radius is 2 and the offset is 10 so for now what's happening nothing's happening now uh let's just create the obstacle let's create 3d cube and we'll call it obstacle let's reset its transform change its scale add a tag of finish we'll add a box collider and it will have the color of our obstacle 
so this one's pretty much bluish and before it looks good let's change our lighting settings so let's go into window and rendering lighting new lighting settings and we'll generate the lighting so it should look good whenever we restart our game and let's save this obstacle as a prefab and let's delete this let's go inside the obstacle and it's almost pretty much shiny uh, it doesn't matter so we'll need to create a text text mesh pro and we'll just call it score and inside the canvas let's have it world space to two let's have it zero zero negative zero point five one and reference pixels per unit to one and similarly for the score we'll set the font size to two and let's align it towards the center and width and height to two so that's how it's looking and if we change it to one yep one is pretty much better and let's set it as zero so we have almost get component in children text recursively there is only one text so we'll assign this obstacle to our game manager and we'll spawn this obstacle whenever we create a game and the game end condition is uh, only the game end condition is remaining and we have already attached the player script so let's go inside visual studio and let's uh, start <laughs> so this one has we have created another obstacle distance so it will start spawning at each obstacle offset distance and um, 100f <clears throat> 110 now nah, maybe 100 will be fine so after create path we'll need to spawn our obstacles so we are going to spawn our obstacle while obstacle distance is less than path creator dot path dot length and let's get our current pose Let's get our normal path creator dot path dot get normal at distance. And let's start the obstacle distance. Similarly, we'll need to get the direction. And after we have direction, we will need to change the local up. And normal needs to be normalized. Similarly, this one needs to be normalized. Dot cross, and we are going to cross. Direction normal. Dot just in case. And let's change our current position. local up plus normal into one as negative one and here we'll do random dot range from zero and two is equals to zero so that's going to be 50 50 percent chance and after that let's create the temporary obstacle 
and it's going to be instantiate uh, instantiate the obstacle prefab and after instantiating the obstacle prefab let's set its name to obstacle instance of this one and after that m obstacle dot transform dot set position and rotation for the position we are going to pass the current pose and for the rotation the rotation and we are going to look in the direction for the forward and for the upward we are going to look the local up so that should set our position and let's set the obstacle offset into 2x and let's update our score so amp obstacle dot get component in children and it's going to be the tmp text dot text Hmm. So the first thing is going to be its casting to an integer, and then what we'll need to cast to an integer. We'll subtract one from it. And we'll change it the string. And now obstacle distance minus constant distance obstacle distance minus constant distance and Obstacle distance minus spawn start distance divided by offset into 2f. So we'll need to divide it again. Divided by offset into 2f and Mm, mm, mm. so let's go with this for now and let's go inside unity and let's see if our obstacle spawner is working so we'll need to select the road creator because that's the problem we'll be facing every time so let's hit start and 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So that's the problem. And it's getting divided by offset twice. So we'll fix it now. And that should be it because instead of divide, it should be multiply. So it was just uh, instead of divide, we are instead of multiply we were just using the divide and uh, let's create the game and condition so for the game and condition uh, it's going to trigger whenever the player collides with an obstacle which uh, obstacle has the tag of finish so it's going to be almost pretty much easier so let's create on trigger enter and here on trigger enter if other dot compare tag and we'll compare the tag of finish then game manager dot instance dot have game started is going to be false then in pass it's uh, going to be int dot parse and what we are going to pass is we are going to text so get component in children 
tmpro.tmp text and we'll get the text so this text is going to be the past and we'll pass the game manager instance dot update score with our past and afterwards we'll invoke I mean you can do it uh, unity engine dot scene scene maybe unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot load scene zero and well all voids restart game and we'll invoke the restart game after two seconds so that should do the trick and let's see if our game is ending and that should be it for this game i'm not uh, going to do much more because it should be easier for some simplistic endless level generation and anything else we are just going to add our properties to the obstacles and the environment so let's go inside unity and let's see if everything's working correctly so let's hit play and if we start playing we are able to see our scores they are also correct and if we collide with any of the objects nothing is happening because i think we have it has a tag of finish and our player rigid body it does not use gravity and box collider and similarly obstacle is set to trigger no the obstacle is not set to trigger but why do we have remote component and our obstacle was not set to trigger so let's see now if it works and we'll need to create select the road creator because that's how it is and object reference not set to an instance of object and get component in children similarly we'll need to pass the other dot game object so instead of get component in children for our player we'll need to get component in children for our trigger which is so it's our score is zero and the best score was 14 and now we'll need to select the road creator again so let's hit play and as you can see your game is working correctly and that was it for this video and let's play our game a little bit more we have renamed it uh, somewhat okay and there was a problem when our distance was ending but uh, it should be fixed almost correctly so as you can see we got restarted and i think that's a calculation mistake with our uh what do you call it as the road creators distance because we have just uh, temporarily set it to 100f and hmm, maybe around 40f it uh, checked if it was not greater than 100 and it didn't restart so i think that should be it for this video and if you did like the video do like and comment in the video and if you have any suggestions for another more games do subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below and if you watch the whole video thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video